Assalamualaikum and very good evening everyone. I am Afnan Awar, your today's host. I think I am audible. Welcome to the virtual webinar as part, uh, part of the event of Administrative 2.0 title Solar Complex of Concrete, making site C hydrolytic dam organized by ACIT student chair. We have with us today our keynote speaker of the webinar, Omar Farooq Bhai. Welcome in Bhai. Now I would request our president of the Asia IT student chapter, Chaudhuri Jubairun Jai Bhai, to say a few words. Thank you, Akhil, Good for now. providing me the floor. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank Almighty Allah for allowing us to be united in this platform. Thank you, everyone, for joining, joining us in this webinar. I would like to talk a bit about our student chapter here. We all know that the American Concrete Institute, SEI, is one of the strong authorities of developing concrete industry. SEI has many student chapters worldwide to spread the knowledge of concrete among the students. SEI IoT student chapter is one of them and the best student chapter in Bangladesh, ensuring the excellent university title consecutively two times in a row. We try to organize various events and for the students to make them feel about the world of concrete and structural engineering. Furthermore, we are happy to have Omar Farooq Bhaiya with us today. I am very grateful that he listened to us whenever I approached him to have this webinar and have this amazing webinar with us today. Without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Afia Nawa to carry on the session. Thank you. Thank you, Bhai. Uh, before starting uh, the session to our keynote speaker, I would like to give a brief introduction of our guest speaker, Omar Farooq uh, Bhai. Omar Farooq Bhai is serving as a field engineer at BC Hydro. He has completed his BSc in Civil and Environmental Engineering from IUT and Masters in Civil and Environmental Engineering from the University of British Columbia, UBC, Canada. He is a registered professional engineer in Canada. Also, he has eight plus years of uh, diverse experience in civil and structural engineering and construction su uh, supervision, including artwork, uh, tunneling, roller compacted concrete, reinforced concrete, and structural steel. Without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Omar Farubhai to start the session. Thank you all. Assalamu alaikum. I hope everyone can hear me. Please confirm. Yes, by your audible. Okay. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Afia and Zubair, uh, for uh, hosting this event. And thank you, SEI IoT chapter, uh, to have me for um, for this uh, for this presentation. Um, <clears throat> so today, um, I'm very excited to be here and to uh, to give you a brief um, overview uh, on roller compacted concrete. And, and we're gonna talk about what is roller compacted concrete. And, where is my slide? Give me one second, my slide is not moving. Yes, okay. Uh, so we're gonna talk about briefly um, uh, about Site C hydroelectric dam. And uh, uh, what is roller concrete, compacted concrete, and how we used it at Site C. And we're, we're going to discuss uh, some of the lessons learned uh, during this project. And, and we acknowledge, uh, and then we'll be doing acknowledgments and a question answer period. Um, to give you a brief description of Site C uh, locations. Site C is, uh, is gonna be built in British Columbia, Canada. And British Columbia is located on the west coast of um, uh, Pacific Ocean. And you can see in the map, the pin is uh, shown. Where, so the Site C will be on the northeast of British Columbia. Site C gets its water from uh, Pacific Ocean and comes through 
various channels and comes to the Wilston Lake, which is on the left of the screen and goes through this channel and comes near, uh, near GM Shuram, which is the first, first dam on the, on the Peace River. So this river is called Peace River, which is connected to the Wilston Lake. So you can see GM Shuram uh, first uh, dam, which is in the middle of the screen, the first uh, pin. And the second, second pin is called uh, Peace Canyon Dam. So second, second river on the same, same river. And moving on further to the right of the screen, then we can see the third pin, which is Site C, near Fort St. John. So which will be the third um, hydroelectric dam on the uh, Peace, Peace River. Then we can see uh, a close overview. Uh, we can see the Site C pin uh, in the bottom of the screen, and it is located near Fort St. John, where I live right now. Um, and then we can see another view showing this, this uh, image uh, taken from Google Earth. And we can see Site C uh, locations, and that is on the river. So left of the screen is the upstream of the river, and right side of the screen is the downstream of the river. So we will be building Site C uh, across, across this river. This river is called Peace River. And this is an artistic render of the completion after the completion of the Site C hydroelectric dam, this will be uh, this. This is the view, and what we see from this view, uh, the difference is you see the river channel is so narrow. After the completion of the of the dam, the river uh, river channel will be much much wider, and then water will be uh, burned against this dam, and then the water will be approaching. Uh, behind here and it will be going through our intakes, pen stocks and electricity will be generated in the powerhouse uh, and, and then it will be um, and then flown through the downstream side and go and it will go match with the with the uh, river again on the downstream side. So in, the, in this view we can see uh, the components uh, which are marked we uh, we, uh, it's shown here, we have the dam and the dam will be built uh, from the earth. So that's why it's called earth field dam, uh, meaning we, this will be mainly uh, granular field. There is no concrete involved. And then we, we see <clears throat> in the left of the screen, um, uh, the spillway, Spillway it comes from the world like when we have emergency water, like a, there's a lot of rainfall and, and the water level in this reservoir is uh, so high. And if we keep continue holding the water, it might uh, impact the whole dam and then, uh, and then our structures. So we have to spill some water. So that's why we need an spillway. So this is, this is what is called a spillway. And if, if we see we need uh, more water to be uh, discharged, then we, that's why we have overflow auxiliary spillway. So this is an interesting feature and gives, uh, yeah, gives uh, safety uh, uh, to, the, to the whole structure. If we need more water to be discharged, that's why we have uh, overflow auxiliary spillway. And then we have uh, uh, in, uh, in the dash line shown the RCC foundation for concrete structures. So, uh, so that is our topic uh, for discussion today, uh, RCC foundation for the concrete structure. So what we see um, in this image, everything above uh, all the concretes uh, and that is made of concrete and earth fill that will be exposed and our foundation, which, which is RCC foundation, which will be submerged in the uh, in, in the water so we'll be never be we'll never see them in the daylight so what are, what what is the consideration to select rcc and um, why did we uh, build um, rcc buttress and uh, so the the primary reason was the geological features 
um, in, in this area. We found through several uh, drilling program or geological investigation that uh, there is a continuous bedding plane um, and the, those bedding plane runs parallel to the river, uh, river channel. So if we, if we go back uh, to this slide, we can see that the river channel is uh, flowing um, uh, from, from, the, uh, from our view, it's coming from the uh, background to the fore foreground. So it's like a, uh, if uh, uh, north-south, the, uh, the river is running. So the bedding plane the, uh, is also uh, running parallel to the river channel. So, uh, and if we see our concrete structures, which is on the left of the screen, the spillway and generating station, they are, um, uh, so they are uh, also, uh, uh, it's, it's in a, in a, in a um, like, a, it, it is also parallel to the, the to the, to our um, earth. So in case, if the earth moves, um, due to like uh, various geological event, let's say earthquake or uh, due to uh, some water pressure, if the earth moves, then we, we can uh, anticipate this powerhouse or the spillway uh, or the generating station, they will also move. So there's a huge risk if we just build on it, on the, uh, if we just build the concrete structure on the uh, regular rock. Uh, so that's why we had to replace uh, some of the weak uh, rocks with uh, um, uh, hard RCC, uh, re uh, roller competed concrete. Uh, just, just for information, buttress means uh, butting against. So uh, the structure will be butting against the rock. So that's why it's called buttress. Okay, moving on. So... When we have a uh, continuous bedding plane and they are weak, uh, so, and, and, and the bedding planes are stratified. So when you take a section of the, of the earth in this area, you can clearly see the, uh, the, uh, the rocks are stratified. They are not like a continuous mass. They're not like, not like a, a big rock mass, one mass. They're like, uh, whenever there was a tide going one direction, we have some sediments, and then when we have tried going into uh, another direction, we have another sediments uh, layer. So it's like a layer above layer, layer above layer. And because of this layer above layer, we have weak zones. And what happens to the weak zones? If we open, <clears throat> uh, if we do an excavation, uh, so the, zone, uh, the, the layers start to open. And that is a, a, a and layer starts to open. There will be a friction, uh, a frictional movement because uh, because of uh, uh, like a poor, poor water pressure. Uh, so that's why we had to uh, we had to install or, or build RCC buttress, which will give us uh, a support for our. Uh, superstructures, uh, which is our uh, spillway, which is our uh, generating stations. And we also found there is a several uh, shear zones. So when, when there's an earthquake uh, possibility, or there is like a heavy rain, rainfall, and for that heavy rainfall, when the water goes to the underground, and there, that water pressure will start to push, uh, push the rock layers, and that, that uh, uh, so that shear zone is very weak and that can cause uh, a slide. So uh, that is another consideration for um, replacing regular rock with RCC. And we, uh, 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 with our studies uh, of uh, geological features, we found that the rock in this location is not a, a regular rock, uh, or granite is, is, is a shale. So shale is 10 times less stiffer than our uh, concrete or RCC. So the, another uh, consideration to uh, replace regular rock with RCC is that RCC is much more stronger. And, um, and then 
if we uh, have to drain some of the pore water from the rock, the easiest way to do it from a man-made structure than uh, digging a tunnel into, um, into very soft rock. So when we made our RC RCC buttress, we made, a, we made sure some drainage is provided um, so that when the water comes, it will go to the drainage location and we can easily pump out the water so that the, our structure will not uh, be affected largely. So in this snapshot, uh, what I want to demonstrate is that um, I, I, I was talking about bedding plane. So uh, with our different uh, geological investigation, we found uh, we have so many bedding planes here. This BP 18, 25, 28, 31, 33. These were the, um, the bedding planes uh, which we were more interested uh, due to their char characteristics and uh, their weak, uh, uh, weak uh, cohesion uh, in between them. So, so we, uh, and also we can see from this slide that the bedding planes run parallel to the channel. So if this was our river, if the right side was my river and river was running north-south, and also we can see the bedding planes runs uh, uh, like a parallel to the river channel. And, uh, and then our structure is, is butting against this, uh, the rock. Uh, all this gray, uh, uh, gray color is, is our rocks. Uh, so if the if for some reason if if there is a lot of rainfall or earthquake if the bedding plane moves to from left to right our structure will be uh, in hazard. So uh, and, and then we also shown in this uh, slide that uh, this color uh, colored area uh, between the uh, between the rock and then the structure is called soft rock. This soft rock we have replaced with uh, reinforced uh, roller compacted concrete. We removed this earth and we, we, uh, we have replaced it with roller compacted concrete so that um, we, we give more um, uh, stiffness to our structure. And, uh, and lastly, we see this small uh, opening. This is a drainage gallery. So why we have this feature? In case there is a heavy rainfall, or as you know, in Canada, we have snow. So in case like there's a, there's a lot of snow, and then after the snow is gone in April, so that water where it is going to go, it's going to go to the earth, it's going to go to the rock. And because this rock is stratified, so they are going to go in uh, and 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 through the, uh, through the layers of rock, they're going to travel, uh, uh, travel through the layers of the rock and, and, and then they're going to create a heave or water pressure to our structure. So we need to create some drainage system so that we, we take out any water from the rock so that no, no excess water pressure on our structure. So from this tunnel, we have lots of drill holes and we installed uh, PVC pipe, perforated PVC pipes, and uh, through those pipes, we suck out water, we drain water so that no excess water pressure on our structure. Uh, so uh, in this structure, we can also see the approach channel inverse. So the, uh, this uh, location, the left of the screen will be all the water. This is the reservoir area and the intake. Intake is the concrete structure where the water will flow through uh, and then we did not show the penstock, uh, uh, but basically penstock is a steel pipe uh, through which the water uh, flows through downstream and goes to powerhouse. Powerhouse is the heart of the generating station where the, uh, the water, uh, uh, water uh, changes from uh, mechanical energy to electrical energy uh, through turbine and generator. and uh, using uh, uh, and, and then that electricity is uh, is then added to the and the national electric grid and then that's how we uh, illuminate our uh, houses. 
So what is RCC? Um, you, uh, th that is the main, uh, main topic of our um, presentation today. Uh, the definition of the RCC is like roller competed concrete takes its name from the construction method used to build it. It is placed with conventional or high density asphalt paving equipment, then compacted with roller. So um, equipment uh, such as like uh, uh, mining trucks, uh, say, similar to what you have seen uh, in our roads, you see a truck uh, bringing uh, uh, soil uh, uh, mixed with granular, uh, 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 granular material, like for example, uh, stone chips and sands, they're all mixed together and then they bring it to the roads or any field, uh, field location. And then they uh, dump them and then a, a roller, a roller can be a sheep foot uh, or it is like a smooth drum roller uh, and then they compact it. So similar to that concept, um, uh, but it's, 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 it's concrete. Roller compacted concrete has the same primary ingredient such as traditional uh, as the traditional concrete cement, water, uh, aggregate, such as gravel or crushed stone. But unlike conventional concrete, it is drier. And it is stiff enough to compact it by the vibratory roller. Uh, we'll discuss more about what, why it is drier and what is like how it is stiff. Uh, history. Uh, brief history is roller compacted concrete is used um, over 40 years in um, uh, around like a different countries. Uh, it is um, uh, in, uh, uh, primarily used for like a large constructions where we need to uh, replace a lot of conventional concrete uh, because conventional concrete is more, much more expensive due to its uh, uh, the, the mix it has like a uh, conventional concrete has like a two times or three times more cement than uh, a, re a roller competitive concrete. So um, in, in large projects uh, such as dams or roads, uh, roller competitive concrete is used. Uh, also, roller competitive concrete can be used in um, in warehouses where we need to build, uh, for example, we need to build uh, a one meter thick slab and it's, it's, a, it's a huge in size. Um, so in order to have a solid foundation, uh, we can use um, roller competitive concrete um, and it's can, it can be very beneficial and then it can be very economical. Um, and it, it is already widely used in different um, uh, in different countries of the world. Um, in, so today, mostly we'll focus on uh, dams because th those are the uh, the largest structures, uh, and then th uh, and that and that is the place where mostly it's it's used uh, due to its uh, nature of economy. Um, China has the highest frequencies uh, of RCC dams. Uh, in Canada, we have, um, as far as I remember, there's uh, two, which is um, recent, and maybe there are a uh, few more, but those are very small in size. Um, engineering and scientific knowledge is approving with each generation of RCC dams. Um, RCC dams, has been built uh, in different environmental condition. Uh, environmental condition is a, a very important factor when considering uh, the design for our, uh, roller compacted concrete. Um, but engineering, uh, engineering with our growing engineering knowledge and proven experience, we uh, we can now build in very uh, extreme hot weathers uh, to very cold weathers such as uh, Canada. Uh, in Site C, uh, the, uh, the key, key or uh, I would say uh, some, of the, um, some of the unique design features are in our uh, structure, we have stepped uh, buttress 
So um, before in our definition, uh, we said we use very less um, uh, formwork accessories, but sometimes we can also use um, formworks uh, but that formwork, uh, we design such a way it is very efficient, and we can uh, take advantage of uh, of the uh, of RCC and, and formwork at the same time because well, it's a repetitive uh, uh, action. Um, so when we design the, the the RCC for site C. Uh, the RCC, the roller complete concrete buttress, acts as a buttress. As I said, buttress is butting against the um, the rock, which gives a solid foundation for our superstructure. Also, we have um, a, a section of RCC which will be acting as a dam. So the dam means it is a water retaining structure. So this is unique. Um, not all the RCC uh, is built over the uh, uh, various countries uh, is built as a dam. Mostly it is used as a foundation so that uh, um, we can build a superstructure, but uh, a dam is uh, not frequently built with RCC. So it is, um, it is unique. Uh, uh, so there is a lot of uh, different structural considerations uh, we have to do because uh, dam retains large amount of water so it needs to uh, hold uh, uh, hold the water one second is the first uh, not the second the first and foremost you need to give enough stability so that the water does not um, overturn the dam and then uh, make the people of the downstream or the make the people of the of the the nearby locality in uh, in harm's way so so uh, we uh, in, uh, the the uh, the, uh, the rcc buttress uh, gave us the stability and the dam uh, we designed uh, in such a way so it never uh, i should not say never we designed it for an event of one in a 1000 year um, situation so uh, it, it, it is highly stable, uh, 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 so we used all, all the uh, data that we are available uh, from the history to give a uh, very, uh, very strong, strong uh, dam structure. And so this foundation uh, is a mass to counteract the rebound and movement of the unlaying, underlaying shale bedrock. So, as I said, the the rocks in this local uh, in this area is uh, stratified. They are they are like a uh, layers. So, uh, when we are excavating uh, due to uh, for for the construction activities, the the layers can move, uh, uh, and this movement can happen. Um, like any time, so this uh, con uh, this uh, RCC structure give uh, uh, the stability to this uh, uh, to, to this rock, and it will act like a mass because once the RCC is built, the whole thing uh, from top to bottom will act as a monolithic mass. Uh, it, it's not gonna be acting like the the rocks uh, where where it is stratified and the, the cohesion between the uh, their layers is very less uh, versus the RCC will be one big mass and it will be more stable. RCC, uh, when uh, also another uh, feature is where RCC is placed against, against the rock, the, that rock generates acid. It is called um, potentially acid generating rock. If you Google for it, you will know that when it comes in contact with like water or environment, it starts to degrade, it starts to give away its acid. So which can deteriorate uh, the, uh, the, uh, the concrete and, and, and uh, you, you may be uh, familiar with the alkali aggregate reaction, which is basically 
uh, expansion of aggregates due to the uh, due to the availability of uh, silica um, in the in the ag aggregate so so when it uh, how do how did we deal with it so where it's going to be contact with the rock we have used uh, more cement content in that location and and, and then uh, to make that uh, concrete more much more stronger and uh, we, uh, as as you see in the first picture the the top left picture we we see steps and how did we achieve steps uh, with uh, with formworks and where uh, and we needed to have smooth finish for aesthetic uh, aesthetic reasons uh, so and against the formworks we used conventionally vibrated concrete uh, to give that and also uh, as i said we uh, we have a dam feature uh, so in the dam because it, you know concrete is very weak in uh, tension so we needed to um, uh, increase our tensile capacity uh, for the dams so uh, so we when we did our flow uh, flow study and then we uh, and, and, and and we did our final element analysis for the dam we found like some of the locations which will be very critical uh, uh, and weak in uh, uh, weak in tensile strength so we we strategically added some uh, reinforcement to um, to counteract those um, tensile stresses <clears throat> so design of rcc what 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 were the considerations uh we we uh we have uh, considered for designing the rcc because rcc is not a regular concrete it's not um uh, is is not going to be vibrated through uh like a vibrators uh or it's not going to be finished with uh, with a mason or with a hand tool or a mechanical tool uh so there are a few things um um involved in this one is season because we cannot construct rcc when uh, uh, when there's rain uh, similar to any in any concrete we cannot place concrete when there is rain because water gets into the concrete and the the whole water cement ratio is uh, is not balanced anymore and the more water in the concrete uh, the more weaker it is delivery of the concrete uh concrete conventionally you saw um it's mixed in the mixer and then you it, you deliver into a wheelbarrow or you deliver into like those concrete mixer but for rcc you deliver through a haul truck or mining truck as you see on the left of the screen the the, uh, the mining truck is receiving the material so those were the equipment that uh, that we use also you can see on the left top screen uh, there's a blue uh, arm swing uh, so it's a conveyor it's a uh, it's, it's a conveyor belt uh, you are familiar like conveyor belt uh, conveys uh, material so we convey rcc or roller compacted concrete through the conveyor belt dump it into the truck and then truck brings it to the uh, where we in need needed to be placed uh, so we use conveyor belt also for transportation um, and then we place the concrete we need to place the concrete in very thin layer 300 mm or 12 inch um, before it is getting compacted uh, <clears throat> also we considered water stop uh, um, uh, because Uh, as as i already told you we will be building this buttress against rock and rock is stratified water can come and start to push our uh, uh, structure and uh, that is uh, th that's going to uh, make a problem for the uh, the buttress so we install water stop uh, it is uh, as, as it says like water stop we install pvc um uh, pvc uh, um it's like a very hard um liner 
we install it and uh, and it stops water um, wh where we is, uh, install the uh, water stop there's another uh, good question that um, because as you know when concrete uh, is mixed yeah, I don't, if, if you ever put your hand into the concrete you will uh, notice it is hot uh, it is generating uh, some heat what is that heat it, that heat is a heat of hydration so the our site c structure is uh, about um, one kilometer long it, it, it's in in the length is one kilometer in length and uh, at times is wide in uh, 40 meter wide so aci uh, uh, gives us guideline that um, no no mass shall be more than 20 meter by 20 meter uh, at one time and if it is more than that uh, then it will start to crack sporadically and then we will not be able to control it so we had to intentionally create some um, breaks in our structures so that we don't see like random cracks in the structure so when we have uh, intentional cracks and that is the weak point for water to get in so that's why we had to put water stop so that water does not go from one side to other side and we are safe another consideration is that the uh, concrete has to be placed in co cool temperature because as i said earlier when concrete is mixed heat of hydration start to uh, uh, generate and if we can keep our uh, placing temperature the, the time when we are mixing concrete and placing it in place if we can keep it in in, in the range in, in in the low temperature it uh, like when the concrete cures you know the heat starts to rise up 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 until it reaches uh, its peak and at that peak time um it, uh, it, it is not beyond the beyond the the limit uh, so you know um uh, sei if you if you read sei uh, provisions that concrete uh, temperature differential um from the inner like uh, inside or center of the any any concrete mass and then the outside of the or the surface of the uh, concrete mass should not be greater than 20 degrees celsius so uh, that consideration was uh, taken uh, taken into account and if we can keep the concrete or rcc temperature lower uh, during placement it will help you to uh, to keep the differential from center to surface lower during its curing period uh, how do we measure the the workability like you know conventional concrete we uh, measure uh, through slump test uh, it's a conical shape um, um, uh, shape apparatus we put concrete we rod it and then we take the slump uh, the height of the of the slump basically uh, but in rcc because it's dry mix and we cannot uh, we cannot measure it uh, just like normal uh, concrete so uh, there's a different uh, uh, setup it's called vb uh, test and uh, it gives us the workability it's a it's a measure to uh, to know the workability and the consistency of the of the rcc I will show you uh, the testing uh, apparatus later. Uh, so that was uh, one con uh, consideration uh, for the design. And then uh, concrete, as you know, it, uh, when it's uh, uh, mixed, there is a time how long the concrete will be live. And, and in, within that time, the concrete needs to be worked and then placed in the final location so that it, it, is, it will start to uh, gain its strength so for that reason we whenever we are designing a concrete we must need to know when is our uh, when our initial set starts and final set uh, happens because when, once the initial set starts 
then we should not do any more work with the concrete because if we do that then we will have porosity in the concrete which will not be good for our uh, structure and for rcc because you know um, we have heavy equipments these these equipments are heavy heavy in their way so we need to make sure when we place one layer one 12 inch layer of concrete we need to make sure that it sets uh, in, such, in such a fashion that we can bring in these uh, equipments again on top of it and it will not sink in so we, it, it, this this time for setting is very important for our structure plus the time of setting is also important for another reason because we need the cohesion between the and the, the first layer to second layer to second layer to third layer so we need the cohesion so in order to create the cohesion we need to know when our concrete is starting to set uh, if if we uh, exceed our in initial set time then we have another measure we, if we exceed uh, the, the final set time we have we need to take another measure to make sure the the, the layers between the the rcc is is uh, is monolithic and and then another consideration is fresh in situ density of the um, uh, of the theoretical air free density so how do we calculate our density of the um, concrete as we know uh, regular concrete has a density of about uh, uh, 23.5 um, uh, 23.50 kg per meter cube so when we design for 1 meter cube of concrete uh, for normal weight concrete that is the 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 weight uh, uh, or the density of the uh, of the concrete so for uh, 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 for roller compact concrete we also do the same we take different um, uh, and, and different uh, components of the uh, concrete mixture and we find what is our total density of the rcc so we 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 first established that in our lab testing and and when we deliver that rcc to our final location of the structure we also need to make sure whatever the the laboratory uh, density uh, we measured uh, which is called theoretical air free density uh, it is within the range of 97 to uh, 100 Uh, when we finally deliver to the site so uh, we we also do a field testing to find the the fresh in situ density is also within that range in average of like 98% from the th uh, theoretical air free density um uh, and then design strength so before we design uh, all this um uh, uh, roller concrete concrete we first find first uh, the owner gave us what uh, what needs to be the the design strength of the concrete or the uh, roller concrete concrete uh, so they require a 25 mpa uh, at one year so the uh, regular concrete achieves its strength within 7 days or in some cases uh, um, 14 days or 28 days but for roller concrete com compacted concrete the design strength will achieve in one year and um, as i said before the final set uh, initial set and final set is very crucial for rcc monolithic structure so uh, it, it, what we say is the if the concrete is placed one, like a one layer or 12 inch of uh, concrete is placed in first layer if we can place the second layer within 21 or 24 hours uh, if we can place a second layer it is called hot joint and that joint is hot so the uh, the, the the joint will be uh, more or less very closer to co cohesion so it gives us the best performance and uh, uh, co cold joint is that when the the first layer exceeds 48 hours so in that case when we are placing the second layer uh, uh, the, the joint between the first and second is called cold joint 
before we do the second layer, now we need to do some modification, some, we need to prepare the surface, we need to make the surface rough, uh, we need to place uh, some um, bedding mortar, which is, uh, which is grout, which is like a, if you can, uh, um, you can say uh, that is mixture of uh, cement and sand in one and four or one and five ratio. Uh, so it's, it's a very um, thin uh, mixture of mortar is, is spread around the uh, structure and then the, uh, the following layer is placed so that we achieve uh, a joint, a monolithic joint. And then another joint is called worm joint. Worm joint is uh, the, the first layer exceeded 24 hours, but it did not go beyond 48 hours. So in that case, uh, same thing, um, we, did, we don't have to prepare the surface, we don't have to roughen the surface, uh, but we only have to apply some, um, uh, uh, some uh, mortar, bedding, bedding mortar, uh, before uh, uh, placing the following layer. So again, and this will give us a monolithic joint. So when we <clears throat> decided uh, uh, our um, uh, concrete strength, 25 MPa, uh, and then we decided all these criteria before that it needs to have a, a good workability um, and consistency, and it needs to give us a, 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 <clears throat> a very, very good consistency. So what, what we uh, go in, 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 in next is that we find what the material is locally available. So fortunately for us, uh, this <coughs> site C is located on, uh, on a huge uh, amount of alluvium material, uh, which is basically like we have a natural deposit of rocks, sands, and uh, um, uh, rock and sands, which is uh, our um, primary uh, composition of the concrete. Um, so that, that gave us an opportunity to, to reduce our cost for the construction. So we have drilled in different locations, did the boreholes, um, bore and we sampled uh, the, uh, the rocks and the local, uh, locally found materials. And then we, we, we have chosen a mixed design. So in that mixed design, um, um, we wanted to use uh, lots of big, big rocks, gravels. So that's why we, in our mixed design, you can see in coarse aggregates, we have up to 40 millimeter, uh, uh, like a nominal uh, uh, size, 40 millimeter aggregates. And then uh, uh, coarse aggregate goes all the way down to five millimeter. And then on the group three, you can see, you can see like, uh, the, the gradation is from 5 to uh, 0.08 millimeter. When we combine all these uh, coarse aggregate, group one, group two, and group three, and you see RCC combined uh, gradation, and all these uh, materials is percent passing by mass, and, and this is the combined gradation. And there's a note saying RCC combined gradation best fit with the following proportion. We have 30% from the group one, 35% uh, from the group two, and 35% from group three. In the following slide, you can see, uh, this is a gradation chart. This blue uh, dash and solid lines shows where is our uh, fine aggregates. The green and red line shows our um, coarse aggregates. Black line, the black line shows a smooth curve for our RCC combined mixture. So when we are designing RCC, it is very important to make sure the coarse aggregate and the fine aggregates, the, the gradation is like, uh, is very smooth. Uh, otherwise we'll have like lots of voids and uh, will not be able to achieve um, good density. And this is the 
uh, estimation of um, proportions of the RCC mixes. So uh, the the designer came up with like two uh, two type of RCC mix. And in if you notice in the first two lines, cement generally used cements. Uh, it's very less amount of cement, like only 50 kilograms in one mix and 70 kilogram in another mix. Um, same thing for RCC2, 50 kilogram in one and 65 kilogram in another one. And uh, also uh, not so much of fly ash, we used um, 110 kilograms, maximum 130 kilograms. So combined, uh, like they are not, more than 200 kilograms. If you know your conventional concrete, conventional concrete uses a lot more cement than this. Um, in other concrete mixes that we use here, uh, there is no conc conventional concrete is less than 300 kilograms. And uh, more concrete, uh, more cement or fly ash means more money. So uh, this is another reason to choose RCC mixes uh, for foundations, um, uh, such as uh, such uh, as our site C foundations, uh, we can reduce uh, the 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 our uh, uh, our total budget to a very great extent if we if we can if we can choose a mixture with which uses less cement and uh, also for our environment environmental friends uh, it is a good news that when we use less cement and uh, that means we reduce um, carbon footprint. And also in the slide, you can see um, the water, uh, what is the free water that needs to be added. The amount of water is, is not that much, very less amount of water is needed because we moisture condition the aggregates first so that uh, not too much water is needed. And, and, and because uh, this free water is added to to make the, water, uh, the cement working and then make sure we have the adequate amount of workability. Uh, coarse aggregate is shown, we have nominal maximum size of aggregate is like 40 millimeter and uh, that is the coarse uh, maximum uh, coarse aggregate size. Um, we also use some retarders. Retarders is, um, uh, it was needed because um, we have in the middle section of the, the mass uh, the middle section of the mass, we used roller compacted concrete. That is the 90% uh, of the mass. But on the faces, on the sides, uh, where we are going to be installing formworks or wh which side will be in contact with the rock, we needed to uh, use uh, regular conventional concrete in order to achieve uh, smooth surfaces and also to achieve um uh, like a good um uh, good concrete structure and then having less effect from um acid generating rocks uh, so the conventional concrete sets very quickly because it has lots of cement and lots of heat well, uh, you, if you have lots of heat that means uh, the strength is gaining too quickly so we needed to uh, retard that and also we need to balance RCC at the same time. Uh, we don't want RCC to be setting faster uh, as well. So we added uh, some admixture, uh, some retarder uh, and water reducer as well. Uh, because as you know, for, for this, we need uh, for RCC mix, we need very less water. So, so some amount of retarder and some amount of water reducer was as added. And that there is not too much in, uh, in, in the whole uh, 2400 mix uh, is only one kg to three k kilograms. Uh, the maximum uh, retarder or water reducer is added. So, how do we test the RCC uh, uh, on site? So, before we uh, uh, do, uh, uh, so we, we made this uh, concrete uh, or RCC mix in, in laboratory, we found out our different proportions of the mixture. And then we did a density test and we made sure the theoretical air free density uh, of the mixture is uh, around 2400. So that is our laboratory test results. So when we deliver the material on site and we're gonna be building 
in a large volume, we need to make sure that each truck is bringing consistently same um, same material. So on the on the left of the screen, you see there is an apparatus. It's called BB table. So this is a, a cylinder shape um, uh, apparatus, and and then on top there is um, it, it's a weight. It's a surcharge weight, basically. And then this is mounted on a vibrating table. Uh, this black box is a um, is a vibrator, and then there is a, a switch. Is a uh, manually you turn on and you start to vibrate. You shake the material. Um, you first you in, you first put your material into the search, uh, into the uh, uh, cylinder, and then you 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 install the surcharge over the material. And then you start to shake. You start to shake the table, and then you will notice from surround on the on the surrounding of the uh, surcharge material or paste start to come up. And we count how long it takes for the for the material to be coming uh, or uh, the uh, some paste to be showing on the surrounding of the surcharge. And that is the time. Uh, uh, it is it is that the time required to bring the paste up is uh, already predetermined in in the in the in the laboratory test and that gives us uh, an indication of whether the the material in the truck is still workable or it is too dry so that truck needs to send back to the batch plant again to do uh, conditioning more like uh, maybe add some water or sometimes uh, in the first test, the mix, the uh, the, the amount of concrete uh, that goes in or the RCC goes into the cylinder may be not mixed well enough. So uh, that uh, RCC needs to be uh, thrown out and taken another sample from the uh, bucket after mixing uh, well by hand, and then put in the cylinder and we test it again. Uh, just to double sure that uh, the mix is uh, the test was not false. The first test was not false. Uh, if the two tests gives us um, same uh, same results, that means the whole truck uh, is not going to be acceptable. And, and uh, if we place this material on site, we're going to have lots of voids. We're going to have lots of segregation. So that material needs to be taken out. Another thing is that once we Place the uh, roller concrete to concrete. That is uh, after the, the truck, you see on the right of the uh, uh, photo, right side of the slide, there's a dump truck dumping the material on the placement. There's a roller is, uh, is, is, uh, is ready uh, to roll that, uh, meaning compact that. After the compaction, uh, the, the quality control team comes to site and they use this uh, device and uh, that is in the, you see it's a yellow box with a rod and this is called nuclear densometer it is used to test the in situ density of the um, you, we use it in the roads uh, for gravel uh, uh, granular, granular placement where we have gra uh, gravel we can use it similar uh, strategy for uh, checking the in situ density of the uh, roller compacted concrete, and we verify the the in situ density is within the ninety seven to hundred percent of the theoretical air free density. Is it or not? If it is less than that, then we need to um, uh, do some conditioning. For example, the material that is already placed, we need to dig it out. Uh, we need to do some mixing and then roll it roll it again uh, to achieve that uh, density because uh, as you know uh, if we leave some air voids and that is that will be a potential for um, uh, some some water leakage and, and and damage and also if we have voids in the structure it will not achieve the strength that is required the 25 mp strength or any any strength that is required uh, in the concrete. So 
what are the steps for a uh, roller compacted concrete it's a, it's a repetitive action so we bring uh, concrete or uh, a roller uh, roller compacted concrete from batch plant with a with a mining truck just like this one in the picture on the to uh, in the top of the slide and uh, and it brings to the final location where uh, the roller compacted concrete needs to be dumped so step one dump it and uh, on the on the second picture on the bottom of the slide on the left hand side you see when, when the 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 mining truck is dumping rcc there is a dozer it's a, it, it, it is a mining equipment uh, this pushes and, and the uh, the material that is freshly dumped on the placement it pushes and ma make a layer of not more than 300 millimeter or 12 inch so it evenly spreads around the uh, area uh, so we don't have very thin or very thick layer uh, which is required for compaction because if it is thin uh, we in the next layer we'll, we'll need to have more concrete for to make up and that is not going to work because we, uh, every lift needs to be uh, maximum 12 inch or 300 millimeter so if we make one lift is small and another lift big the compaction will not be good between them so the dozer's job is to make sure the lifts are evenly spreaded and then the lift height or lift thickness is uh, kept to the to the design design thickness and then uh, uh, in the same picture you can see there is a roller it's a smooth drum vibratory roller so this goes back and forth back and forth and compacts the material step four cure it curing 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 is the most important uh, for any concrete structure but it is uh, a little different for uh, roller compacted concrete you need very less amount of water to cure it and step five repeat it same thing over and over and over again. So uh, another reason to select uh, roller compacted concrete because it, it, it is a repetitive work. And that way, we uh, once we train uh, a, a group of people, they can do the same work again and again and again and again and save us training time, save us mixed design uh, time, save us uh, uh, so. Uh, in, in different aspects and give us the uh, best economical result. And uh, it, see, there's a fun fact for Site C, we have placed more than 1.7 million cubic meters of RCC. That, that is, um, I don't have the comparison, but um, 1.7 million cubic meter of concrete, it's a lot of concrete. Um, batching plant. Batching plant is a is a uh, is a key um, uh, consideration for uh, for for making sure you have um, right amount of production uh, happening uh, for for uh, for the roller computer concrete to be placed. So, uh, sorry, the the presentation uh, is is more than one hour right now. I will not take much more time after this. So we need to make sure the batching plant is, is uh, uh, readily available and it can produce, uh, very, uh, it can produce enough uh, com concrete uh, so to continue the operation all the time. Because as you remember, uh, uh, like we need, we need um, uh, initial set and final set to be like a 24 hour to 48 hours. So it's a continuous operation. If we delay concrete, uh, production it will take long time to um, uh, like if we delay the uh, production then it will take long time to finish our project so uh, our batching plant here in site c there's a five rcc batching plant you can see in the notes uh, the batching plants together they can make 750 meter cube of concrete per hour that's an incredible number of uh, <laughs> concrete to be uh, made per hour. But generally, we uh, when we are on the full production, we are doing 
550 to 600 meter cube per hour. We also had one concrete uh, mix, uh, mixer where 50 meter cube of concrete was uh, being made because we needed that for two edges of the mass. Uh, transport, transportation of RCC is uh, also a very key uh, uh, consideration. We need to make sure how fast we are bringing this material because uh, 1.7 uh, million cube of concrete is, is a huge amount. We need to make sure we are transporting it uh, with an economical time um, so that um, we are not um, uh, we are making sure the con operation is continuous. No, nobody is waiting because every equipment is counting time. So uh, if, if some equipment or uh, some workers are sitting idle, uh, it's not help, uh, helping anyone. Uh, for our site C, we found uh, truck delivery was the most economical and uh, that's what we used it. Uh, curing, as I said, curing is very important, but you need very less amount of water. You don't need to uh, pond it with water, just like the conventional concrete where you have lots of cement, so lots of heat of hydration. So you need to keep uh, adding water to those conventional concrete, but for RCC, because it's a very less amount of water. So you need to just only moist it. It is like, an, you need to keep the surface not to be dried. Like, you know, those um, um, uh, surfaces where there's no water in the concrete and it looks very pale and it looks gray. We, we just only need to see the surface, just like the picture here, nice looking uh, uh, surface. We are placing concrete in very hot days, like when the temperature is like over 30, 30, 30 degrees Celsius and it is um, very hot. So workers are continuously spraying water just to keep the surface uh, not to dry, get dry. And insulation of RCC, as you know, uh, uh, like we we are in a in a, such a climatic condition where we have very hot weather and also very cold weather. So when any concrete is built, we need to make sure they, uh, as I said before, the temperature of the con inner concrete and then surface concrete and uh, does not get uh, like a, in a big differential. If the inner concrete is um, inner concrete to surface concrete temperature is uh, temperature gradient is more than 20 degrees Celsius. There is a chance of uh, thermal cracks and that uh, or shrinkage cracks that will not be good for our uh, structure. So we need to make sure concrete is covered and uh, insulated so that the, the heat doesn't uh, dissipate uh, from the surface. So on the structure, uh, we have in installed some insulation you can see uh, gray and uh, blue, all these panels that is added on the structure to keep the heat intact, with, uh, not to dissipate from the, from the concrete body. Uh, on this slide, you can see um, 3D render of the structure. Uh, so we have the spillway buttress that is made of RCC. So all this uh, structure that you see here is made of RCC. Then we have powerhouse buttress. Then we have dam and core buttress. So this is the dam and core buttress. It is, is the only structure which will be above the water, uh, sorry, the above the ground uh, and uh, spillway buttress and powerhouse buttress will be always submerged. So uh, the dam and core buttress was very critical in design uh, to make sure uh, it is not overturning and, uh, and then giving its stability because it will be retaining water on the, on the background. And this is the cross section of core buttress. Um, and, and in this picture, you can also see uh, from the, where my cursor is, from this, uh, uh, from the elevation for about uh, 435, from the elevation 435, anything below will be butting against the rocks and from 413 above will be retaining water. Same thing, this is dam buttress. So this, uh, this dam buttress will be also same thing, 413, 435 below will be butting against the rock and then above, uh, 413 above will be retaining the water. And the reason it is called dam buttress, the earth fill dam will be on the right hand side 
of the uh, uh, of the of the of this RCC structure. This is powerhouse buttress. We see um, uh, four, four uh, approximately four thirteen below. This green area is all RCC, and it's going to be always covered, and it, no no RCC will be exposed. So this is only just giving the stability to the rock uh, and a mass foundation. Spillway buttress, same uh, here. You can see this gray color uh, shaded area, gray shaded area is the RCC. Then this is also will be under uh, um, or covered with conventional concrete, so it will never see uh, daylight. Uh, the difference between the conventional concrete and the granular fill to the RCC is that uh, conventional concrete, you need formworks, you need a large setup, you need a, a delivery truck uh, pumps to place concrete in high elevation, you need um, uh, cranes, uh, and then crews need to manually vibrate the concrete. Uh, on the other hand, when granular, uh, granular fill is, uh, you, you haul the material with, um, with um, a mining truck and, and then place it with dozer and then roll it with the compactor and uh, continue the operation, but not um, very stiff as concrete. Roller compacted concrete takes the, uh, takes the advantage of both conventional and earth fill construction. Uh, it uses concrete, uh, but uses the equipment from the earth fill construction. Uh, and uh, it's a repetitive construction uh, and, and, and saves us uh, time in design when, um, and, then, and, and then the operation is very faster. Advantages of the RCC, it's a rapid construction, it's a very fast moving, so you need to always be uh, like a construction management is very important. It reduces uh, the cement utilization, uh, gre greater construction simplicity. If you have like a, a simple structure, uh, you can you, you can uh, you can use uh, RCC, and it will give us um, uh, benefit uh, economy in time saving and then cost saving. Uh, and as I said, reduced direct and indirect costs due to all these items mentioned above. What are the disadvantages of the uh, RCC? Uh, no, not everyone can do a, a roller compacted concrete. So uh, we need to like have experienced contractor. And before we give this uh, job to any contractor, we need to see their previous uh, experience uh, with doing mixed designs and uh, and also making it happening. Uh, so we need, we need experienced contractors. Not well suited for all types of structures. Uh, if we have some complexity in the structures, uh, for example, a football field foundation is easy to build than um, building, a, building a dam because it is more, more intricate and uh, there's a lot of com complexity. Uh, but when we when we uh, when we uh, choose the material, we need to make sure if we're using for dams and it needs to be um, like very big so that we can save time and energy. So um, because if it is if the if the structure is small, um, it will not it's not gonna give us the economical uh, benefit that we're looking for. And uh, for RCC, there is a chance of seepage and shrinkage crack. And as I said, uh, if uh, because we are if if we are building in in very cold weather, where uh, after the completion of the structure, the surface will be cold, and then our inner uh, inner temperature of the concrete or roller compression concrete will be still hot. Because as I said, uh, this uh, concrete will be generating strength after one year. So during its generation of strength, it is still doing that. Uh, it is still the cement is counteracting with the water is uh, rising the heat. So it's still generating strength for one year. So we need to make sure the surface is insulated well enough so that the there is no differential 
uh, thermal differential between surface and inner, and we can control the cracks. So what are the lessons learned from Site C um, RCC program? Is that we need to pre-qualify and select the right contractor. Uh, do not underestimate the learning curve because uh, in any even uh, like not everybody coming from regular concrete background uh, to a uh, roller concrete concrete, they can say, oh, uh, like uh, this is easy, um, but it is not easy. So do not underestimate the learning curve. Invest the time into the trial program and early works. Before we make our fi final uh, structure, the first thing we need to do is to make the laboratory testing and make sure we do a small um, uh, trial program to see how the, how the mix is actually uh, um, behaving. Uh, uh, so we need to do a trial program. So invest time in the laboratory works and trial program and doing the mix design. Retain, uh, uh, retaining experience across seasonal efforts is an invaluable investment because as I said before, um, RCC is only seasonal. We cannot do it in very cold weather or we cannot do it in, in the rainfall events. So uh, the crew that will be working uh, in the RCC structure is, uh, is very, uh, retaining them is very important. Like, uh, because uh, when you retain experienced people, uh, you, re uh, you don't need to train them um, in the future years. So that is another investment. Uh, avoid unnecessary changes. If you, um, before you go for final construction, make sure, make sure the structure that you are building has less complexity and then, and, uh, and that way you can avoid any unnecessary changes uh, like in the middle of construction. And do not waste good weather days. Um, it's very important. Well, rain is not helping us and cold is not helping us. Uh, for any projects, uh, doesn't matter if it's a roller concrete, concrete project or any projects that you'll be doing in the future, make sure you keep good records. People change, memories are short, but claims will come. It, it, like and this, this, uh, this one advice has to be for, like uh, you, you keep in mind and then for any job you do in the future, uh, it, it cannot be, it can be um any job other than engineering keep good records you are if you're doing any business dealing with anyone keep good records and and then you you will you will find a result one day take the time to step back and appreciate what uh, has been accomplished like when you do any project take time and like uh, give yourself a pat on the back and say like i i finished it and finally, uh, not but least, like when you are doing any project, have fun and, and, and be safe. Uh, so we are almost to the end of the presentation. I would like to uh, give uh, uh, thanks uh, and I, I'd like to acknowledge um, some, some people. Um, uh, th th these are only few people that uh, I can remember right now, but there is like, a lot of people on the background. They helped me. To, to make this uh, wonderful uh, presentation for you and then also the, um, uh, the project, um, BC Hydro and my PHP colleagues. Uh, PHP is the contractor for, to, to make this uh, Site C RCC program and BC Hydro is the owner of the project. Rudolfo uh, Ruiz Gekel, he, uh, he was my advisor during my, uh, during my work. Uh, he comes uh, with like a lot of experience doing uh, RCC uh, um, RCC dams. Corey Orola, he was the construction manager for the RCC program, and he helped me to uh, Corey Orola and John Grewal helped me to build this uh, presentation for uh, for you. And last but not least, I would like to thanks uh, uh, SCI IoT chapter. Uh, 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 to organize this event and uh, and then uh, give give me the opportunity to do this presentation. And now I would like to open the floor for any questions uh, uh, regarding these presentations, or if you want to ask me anything for uh, for your career, um, I'm happy to answer that. 
Assalamu alaikum bhai. Yes, I can ask a question. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Bhai, I'm going to talk about Bangla. Yes, go ahead. Uh, uh, Bhaiya, Aspana, I'm Ami uh, Abu Yusuf Farhad. I'm a director of the Civil Engineering Department. So, I'm a director of the construction line in Bangla. I'm a Bangladesh, Breeze, and I'm a approach road. I'm a project. I'm a project. I'm a project. So, আমরা যেভাবে কাজ করি ইমব্যাকমেন্ট ফিলিং এর কাজটা আপনি বলছেন যে প্রায় একই রকম ইকুইপমেন্ট আমিও দেখলাম যে আপনি ডাম্প ট্রাক দিয়ে ডাম্প করতেছি তারপর ড্রোজার দিয়ে এটা আমি সমান করতেছি তারপর হচ্ছে যেটা আমি রোলার দিয়ে আমরা রোলার রোলিং করতেছি যেভাবে আমরা ইমব্যাকমেন্ট ফিলিং এর কাজগুলো করি তো সেই ক্ষেত্রে দেখা যায় আমরা যখন ইমব্যাকমেন্ট ফিলিং এর কাজগুলো করি রোলারের মাধ্যমে কম্প্যাক্ট করার ফলে অনেক সময় দেখা যায় যে আমাদের টপ যে সারফেসটা ফিনিশিং এ दोष थे के पंचाश मिली मटेरियल गुला सेपरेशन होए जाए तो एक हित रे आम्र जो ड्राई मिक्सिंग कंक्रीट टक उठती सी इखने की इखने की एक उम सेपरेशन होए बा शिक्षित रे सेपरेटेड होइले शेट की भावे अवर कंपैक्टेड बा एक स्मूथ फिनिशिंग आना जाए गुड क्वेश्चन यूसुफ आमी कंटिन्यू करे बांग्लाय तो भालो कथा बोल सो शेट um, segregation, material segregation. So material, uh, uh, so material segregation. Uh, so material granular fill is the same. Material segregation is the same. Dry mix over compaction. Roller is the same. If you remember from your geotech um, uh, courses, there is a, there's an optimum in, in the curve, there's an optimum point where your moisture and then density is like the peak. And then after that, all the, uh, the moisture, uh, you cannot bring any more moisture. The, the, and then if you keep continue compacting that material, the, uh, the density will be going down. And when that happens, and that means your material is dry and material is segregating. Concrete is the same. So the first thing that we did Trial program, trial program and Motamra first day decide Kuri, the Kotobar um, roll coral pore uh, Amader material will achieve 98% of the theoretical air free density. We decide theoretical air free density in the laboratory works and in trial program, and, uh, and, and based on that program, we decide how many roller passes needed for. Uh, to achieve that uh, compaction so same thing for any like if you are doing let's say if you're doing a, a, a fill in embankment or approach um, i would suggest uh, you, you can do some uh, what do you call uh, the strip rolling right. method uh, uh, some strip a strip rolling method let's say you take a section of um, 10 uh, not 10 feet uh, 10 meter uh, take a section of 10 meter and you divide it in like uh, three or four sections and you do um, a roll with the with the roller one back and forth and then you do your uh, nuclear test testing for four different locations and then you roll it again and uh, and then you test again so you you essentially you are creating a graph of showing when is your density is going up up up, up and then it will eventually it will come down uh, you create that uh, 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 graph in, in in the field and then, and then you find what is our optimum point, and at that, uh, the, your nuclear densimeter will give you a density and moisture content, right? So okay. from the graph, you find when is our peak density and moisture, and um, and then based on that, you can find how many roll you need for particular material. But another thing need to be considered that your stockpile, where your material is stock, uh, you, you are stocking your material has to be always um, uh, the, like about the same. So always you need to take samples from the stockpile and make sure the water content is good. Uh, and then the, the, the gradation of the material is also important to make sure uh, the stockpile is, um, is well mixed. I hope you, I answered your question. Yes, very clear.
and also for concrete uh, because it's, it's it's concrete right so so once you have segregation you cannot leave it because otherwise it will get hardened uh, yes. so uh, you remember we said f- f- uh, initial set like 20 uh, 21 yes. hours uh, for 21 hours concrete will not be workable uh, concrete uh, if it is the hot day if it is very hot day we have like about 45 minutes from batching to final positioning so in 45 minutes we need to make sure uh, if we see in the surface like 10 mm or 50 mm we see some surface segregation what we do we go with some excavator we excavate that uh, segregated material and uh, if there is no fines at all we just like completely throw it out uh, and bring new material and for granular fill um, you you just excavate that material and mix it well and then you can roll it back again and uh, try to achieve your compaction thank you bhai yeah thank you i'm expecting more questions from you guys uh, it can be uh, related to concrete or and like not not necessarily uh, only the uh, roller competed concrete we are attending um, aci event um, so any concrete enthusiast please if anybody has any kinds of question you can ask now regarding the station or out of the station but if you are not comfortable at talking you can also comment on the chat box assalamu alaikum bhai wa alaikum assalam ah uh, bhai how do you manage i mean you live in canada right how do you manage yes. concrete in extreme cold weather i mean how do you test that whether it's perfect for the job or not and how do how do you avoid frosting in that extreme case yes so um um there's two type of concrete as you know one is conventional concrete which you vibrate uh, with like a vibrator and one is rcc which is our topic of the today uh in in previous projects uh, and in in the literature there is no um um there is no air entrained uh, oh. roller competent concrete so why like why why i'm talking about air entrainment so concrete um like uh, it can shrink it can shrink during cold temperatures and it can expand in like um, in in uh, in hot hot temperature so if we have air entrainment uh, admixture into the concrete we give the concrete to be uh, um, contract and expand in cold weathers this is an unique uh, uh, to cold regions when we make concrete we add that uh air entrainment admixtures it's about in the range of 4 to 7% for conventional concrete so uh the concrete can have that um uh, if a uh, concrete can be relaxed in hot and uh, concrete can be uh, contracted in the cold uh, so that's how we make sure we don't have sporadic um, cracks anywhere and uh, when concrete is curing like when concrete is Uh, not matured enough how we protect that is basically what i showed you before in the one of the slides is we use um insulation uh what is that insulation so you can see in this picture concrete is not yet uh, this this buttress is just made and then uh, following the uh, construction the uh, the winter came and you see lots of snow so it's very cold in the surface and hot is still maturing I- I- I inside uh, so we needed to keep uh, make sure uh, this rcc is not cracking uh, uh, sporadically so uh, we, we need to control the temperature and and we want to control the dissipation of energy uh so we insulated we insulated it and you can use insulation blanket like just like uh, humans if it is cold you use a jacket same thing for for concrete we use a jacket as we call insulation blanket or it can be like a thick foam um uh, we install it on the surface so that no heat is dissipated and 
for roller compacted concrete there is no um, there is no uh, um, air entrainment because this will not be exposed to the freeze thaw um, freeze thaw action freeze thaw action uh, is uh, if 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 concrete is exposed to dry and wet dry and wet for uh, for the change of season uh, that is called freeze thaw action and this will not be exposed to freeze thaw action so that's why we did not use any air entrainment uh, i hope i answered your question and for more information for freeze thaw uh, action you can refer to aci um, concrete i like i can later on follow up with you uh, for for a specification i have a specification for that um, i can share uh, and it gives you uh, very good uh, detail how to design your concrete uh, to counteract the freeze thaw action and cold temperature assalamu alaikum bhai wa alaikum assalam bhai uh, is there any need for curing uh, roller compacted concrete and how fast can we open this for the general use or public use so um, concrete when we are doing mixed design we need to first set the parameters um, uh, first question curing for rcc uh, is needed just to keep the Uh, surface alive if we are if we are uh, placing one lift another above another one lift above another we need to make sure the surface is alive so that we we achieve good bonding so curing is needed but it's not needed as like conventional concrete where you pond the surface with like lots of water as you see in the picture there there's a person holding a spray uh, and it only like a spraying mist and it's not he's he's not holding a garden hose and like a uh, making it pond he he's just only trying to keep the uh, uh, keep the surface cool and give a fine mist so that is how you do uh, uh, rcc curing and um, and how you can how quickly you can open it for the general use it it depends on the concrete mix design Uh, so when you are designing you, uh, you 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 your parameters one of the parameters will be how quickly we can achieve the um, the strength uh, that is required um, so you can achieve that by um, uh, maybe a, 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 like a adding more cement uh, or, or a cementitious material which will give you the strength quickly so one of the uh, one one of the ways for our case um we will achieve 25 mpa in one year but for if yeah. if we are using for like a roads or let's say a warehouse foundation uh Uh, where we need to like get in and then start building on top um, we may not necessarily need to uh, achieve the uh, the design strength within one month it can be uh, three months four months uh, but concrete will be hard enough to work on it uh, after uh, 48 hours by this is uh, farhad again so can you tell me the uh, job market uh, in canada for the students from bangladesh who are just graduated or having uh, bsc and scholar experience for more than around 5 years and having a overseas job uh, in canada from indeed or monster so what are the chances to get a job from bangladesh in canada or any other countries like you know, we are you know, doing great in construction jobs so i give you an example let's say bangladesh is doing an uh, roller compacted concrete structure um so if i apply for that job do you think they will take me of course because yes, i sure. have this 
of course i have this uh, unique uh, experience and i can i can be very valuable for the project so similarly if if you are you or anyone who is applying overseas for any job if you are having some uh, unique experience which they don't have locally or not necessarily you need to have unique experience sometimes um at that time their budget is already approved and, a, and they need to get this project done very quickly so locally they don't have enough people to support the project they can hire anybody from anywhere in the world so what happened to this project in in site c roller competitive concrete is not local we have a contractor who came from uh, spain and they were very uh, experienced in this uh, job so they came and they did it when they came in they brought the staffs from uh, spain and brazil so uh, so you can understand anyone can from anywhere can come given those situations uh, it's not always guaranteed that you apply uh, linkedin uh, or um, online uh, you will be successful but um, if you can prove some um, some of your um, skills which is unique um, uh, you never know and in this um, era when when everything is global um, you can try anywhere and also like don't keep yourself only like uh, focused in one discipline open yourself um you may have done your <clears throat> thesis or works uh, in geotech but you may have some unique experience for project management you can go into other discipline and do that successfully over there so uh, open yourself for other opportunities too thank you bye Uh, a question in the chat is how can thermal conductivity of concrete affect the heat transfer from other structure uh concrete has very concrete is very low uh, conductive material so uh when concrete is let's say we we place concrete against other other material let's say a pipe is full of water Uh, and if the con- if the water is um cold then that cold water temperature can affect our surface or contact surface between the pipe and the concrete so in that case we need to make sure the water flowing into the into into the pipe is not cold or is not uh, as per aci guideline we should not place any concrete against any surfaces which can draw draw down the concrete temperature because <clears throat> concrete cure uh, there is a previous question how we can how can we open the project for normal uh, uh, public use quickly uh, there there was a uh, there was a posting previously in the aci uh, facebook page uh, hoover dam Uh, i asked a question like how have you guys uh, read about how the hoover dam is made so the uh, uh, all questions are interconnected mass concrete generates lots of heat so the the quickly we can draw down the the heat uh, the heat of hydration we quickly we can achieve the strength and and quickly we can open it for general use so if if you have time uh, you can you can read about hubert dam that is the first dam where we used cooling lines into the structure uh, in into the mass concrete cooling uh, uh, cooling lines is a pvc pipe we just flow cold water through the lines uh, and then we make sure it is covered inside the structure every uh, like a, a, and uh, we we design it in such a way so that we can cool down the structure so the faster we can cool down the structure in the inner 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 concrete 
we are uh, the, the the strength generation will be uh, quicker and then we can open it for the uh, for the uh, normal use or for uh, whatever the purpose was the structure uh, was built for we can open it for that that reason because uh, it, 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 the hoover dam was built in blocks by blocks so if we if we left the hoover dam to be cured by itself without any cooling lines inside uh, some says i think it's in the wikipedia some says uh, it it would have taken um, about like many years i don't remember the numbers it would take instead of doing it in 7 uh, 8 years it would have taken probably more than 50 years to cool down all the heat that is being generated uh, but that is the reason when we select roller compacted concrete uh, we use less cement and it's not it's not like regular uh, conventional concrete so it's a less heat of hydration uh, still uh, we need to make sure the heat is not uh, dissipated so quickly from the surface otherwise we will have a huge um differential between the center uh, or the core to the surface that's why we insulate um i hope i answered uh, the jawad's questions anyone else and we ask you questions i think nobody has any kinds of questions so uh we will take a group photo if possible then turn on your cameras and you can always find me uh in facebook or in the groups and if you have any questions um feel free to uh, connect with me and uh, i'm 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 happy to answer and if if i don't know i will find the right person to uh, be connected uh, bhai can you stop sharing your slides so that we can do the screenshot i think it's done uh, i want to thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to be uh, here today and participate in the virtual webinar administer 2.0 organized by aci student sector thank you so much thank you bye for giving us your busy time thank you allah fez take care everyone assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum bye Thank mm -hmm. you.